Huh? Oh, so what that basically means is that this has a bigger pass-through than you can find in any other plug-in hybrid sedan in the same class. This is relatively massive, so if you excuse me, I, I need some sleep. Clarity. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm so glad to have you with me. I'm here today. I'm very excited because before you, you have the Honda Clarity. The Honda Clarity is by far my favorite plug-in vehicle, even though it is discontinued. Wah, wah. This is still, even to this day, my favorite plug-in hybrid vehicle because you get EPA estimated about 48, 50 miles of range, all electric, and then you still got like seven gallons of gas to get you 300 extra miles after that. This is built with the premises of being an EV first and then it's a hybrid. So it drives like an electric car all the time no matter what it's doing. There are virtually only two or three vehicles if you really want to slice it. Technically two vehicles that are like this, were like this. That would be the Chevy Volt, the latest generation of the Chevy Volt with a V, the, the hatchback car. The Chevy Volt and the Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid were pretty much essentially basically the same vehicle. Not mechanically or anything, just when you're cross-shopping these two, they both act the same way. This car has the space to go with it. This is actually the largest sedan that Honda has made. So it's even bigger than the Accord. It may not be much bigger, but it's bigger than the Accord. I think it looks better than the Accord. And that's just me overall and this is a 2018 so this car is almost five years old sheesh it's kind of hard to say so this is actually a cool test to show you what this car looks like after five years of being used and the owner of this car is famous so don't go away that's coming up i'm going to start out with what technically would be a bad thing under the hood, you do have this 1.5 liter Atkinson cycle four cylinder that still uses the dread awful gas. Ewe! The good news is it does not take a lot of it. I'm charging right now. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear the cooling fans for the uh, charging system turn on. Under 45 miles per hour, this engine doesn't even power the front wheels. It physically can't power the front wheels. After that, electronic clutch pack engages and then it can actually power the front wheels at higher speeds for like highway driving if you even need that that's why this is a bad thing because when you're in EV mode which you can stay in EV mode as long as it has a full charge for up to like a year or I think it's around 15 or maybe even 20,000 miles because then it's self-servicing basically it has to refresh things like the oil and the, the gas of course you don't want things to get stale over here is Honda's dual motor uh, setup and the inverter and all that good stuff. It's where the magic happens. Total system output is 212 horsepower, but you're probably never going to see that because you'd have to drive this thing pretty darn aggressively and fast. I'm talking like 100 miles an hour fast to even see that just because of how the horsepower and torque curve is. What 99% of people will see <laughs> is what the electric motor puts out, and that's 181 horsepower. And I got to tell you, that's more than enough. This car isn't like super fast, but it's definitely punchy quick. Punchy, that's the word, punchy. You put your foot down and it goes. Although I do love the headlights, I don't love the fact that they are these row of LEDs. Don't get me wrong, I think they're cool. It's just that when you use the high beams, they don't have that throw that even halogen has, but even better, HID headlights. Pretty snazzy looking key there. Got the Honda Blue. You have lock, unlock, trunk, because this is actually a sedan. Then you have climate controls. You, this is basically the fan here that's for when you're charging up and you want to cool or heat the cabin you can push that button and uh, you can precondition the cabin which is pretty neat and of course the unique to this car is the charge door open and then you push it again to charge the vehicle if it's set up on another timer or what have you 
So as long as you have the key in your pocket, on your person, on a keychain around you, in a purse, all you got to do is slip your hand in, car unlocks. When you want to lock the vehicle, yes, you can press this, but you can go into the settings and you can tell the car to activate what's basically called the walk away feature that Honda has in a lot of their vehicles. Uh, once the key walks away from the vehicle, the car will lock itself. Love that. As you can see, it's locked now. But as soon as the person with the key in their person, on their person, boop, and there we are. Front door swings open pretty nice. I've been driving this for a while now, so this is set up for my driving position. Getting into the Clarity is such an easy task and just a beautiful place to be in. This does have memory seats, so you can even tell the car to hook it up to whatever individual key you have. If you have key number one, then this will change depending on what key you have. Even though this is a sedan, headroom is massive. From the factory, you can never get a Honda Clarity with a sunroof. Aftermarket, sky's the limit. But that, personally for me, that's okay. That's totally fine because the headroom in this is very generous. Very generous. Very generous. <laughs> Leg room. This has a manual tilt and telescopic steering column with a pretty decent range of motion, I have to say. That comes down and up quite a bit. But as always, geez, if I can find the lever for it, as always, it's always all the way up, all the way back for me. My seat, all the way back and all the way down. This does have eight-way power seats, which is very nice. This is the Touring trim package, so this does have things like heated leather seats, not cooled, which, segue into that, this is a... Uh, I think it was like 40 bucks off of Amazon. This is a car seat cover that is cooled, air cooled. So it doesn't matter if there's hot air or cold air in the cabin. Uh, you can turn this on and you can just have a, a cool breeze on your, your back and your bum. So you sit down, plop in this seat with this seat cover in there and you turn it on. If that's your thing, I mean, 40 bucks, well it was 40 bucks a year ago. I haven't checked to see what it is today, but this is the best 40 bucks I've ever spent for a car accessory because this does work. Anyway, moving on. Legroom is amazing. The dead pedal has more than enough room. Adaptive cruise control that can actually follow all the way down to zero, to a complete stop. All you have to do is hit resume. Once that car starts moving forward, the car will follow. The Clarity will legit follow that car at a safe distance, of course, whatever you preset, until either that set cruise speed has been met or whatever speed below that if said car in front of you is below that speed. The adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and lane departure mitigation, all that works. If you don't have your turn signal on and you start to drift out of a lane, the steering wheel will shake. And it's not like a little zoom, zoom, zoom. No, it's like a blah, blah, blah. It'll let you know, hey, wake up. I got to tell you, those platforms, they work very well on this car. There's a camera here, there's a sensor in front of the big Honda emblem on the front of the grill. It works very well. Standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay with this entertainment infotainment center. Let's start over here with the uh, master window switch here. Of course, everything's power. There is nothing manual about this car except for the release for the rear seats, and we'll get to that later. All four windows are power up and power down automatic, one touch. Love that feature. Here you have the one and two for the memory seats. So real quick, I just want to talk about these. These are not paddle shifters. These are actually how you adjust. You either advance, which is counterintuitive because it's the negative paddle adds regenerative braking. The positive takes away regenerative braking. So I guess in a way these should be called coaster pedals. Because in order to add more coast, you push this paddle. If you want to degrade your coasting abilities and add more regen, you press this paddle. Standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay with, uh, it does have built-in navigation. If you have an Apple CarPlay compatible or an Android Auto compatible phone, you will never see any of that stuff because 
Android Auto and Apple CarPlay already have that stuff built in. So honestly, that's what I've been using ever since it became available, honestly. They decided to go with the more accurate thing to do, which is still Honda, either way you slice it. So I'll push button. Park, right here. Reverse is push back, neutral, and drive. All push button. Parking brake is also push button, which frees up a lot of space on the, in the foot area. And then brake hold. Pretty much just like how it sounds, when you come to a complete stop, you can take your foot off the brake and the car will hold itself there. It's a little bit scary if you think about it, but I use it. Give your feet a rest. Automatic dual zone climate control, which is such a nice feature. I didn't realize how much I love dual zone until I didn't have it. So that is an awesome feature and that's another standard thing. If you buy a Clarity, it will have it. Over here is that uh, cruise control, the adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. Best feature of the whole car. Of course here we have the dead pedal. As you can see there is actually plenty of room. The dead pedal itself is not as long as my foot. But it still has more than enough room for your foot here. So if you wear a size 15 or 16 US shoe, you should be good to go. This cubby hole down here beneath the gear shifter, since there's nothing there but buttons, is very large. It has enough room to have this rather large tissue box here. There's a 12 volt outlet plug here. And for the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay compatible phones, or any phone that uses a USB charger, there is a USB charger here. It's kind of in a weird spot. But if this is your car, you're probably not going to be taking this in and out of the vehicle. So once you plug it in, you should just be okay. And of course, next to that is another USB charger at 1 amps. So it's a pretty slow one. The cup holders is another rare find. Big enough for this big guy. But adaptable enough to have dual stage. So check that out can actually be higher and if you have a coffee mug you can it has enough room to where the handle of the coffee mug will be in that space there I think that's brilliant so here it is with without the platform and then with the platform that is such a neat little feature. Can't get enough of that. The armrest is pretty decent too. It's pretty large. Has enough room for everything that you throw in here and forget about. All right. Let's talk about the back seat. Okie dokie. The back seat. Let's check it out. Yeah. It opens up pretty nicely back here. Big enough to get a car seat in here. Let's get in. <clears throat> yes. Your eyes do not deceive you. Yes. This car. Remember, this is in my driving seat. This is the driving position that this seat would be in. Soft material in the back. A map pocket. Yep. Yep. And this car actually has, I cannot believe this, this sedan, this sedan has better headroom than some of the other smaller hatchback and, and SUVs even. How did that happen? You got to be kidding me. And check this out. <laughs> Honda thinks of everything. This is a little phone pocket. For whatever. If you can ever put your phone down. My phone actually just happens to be not working right now. So, fun fact, if you're trying to get a hold of me during filming, uh, you're kind of out of luck because my phone is stuck on boot loop. It'll boot up and then just keep rebooting over and over again. So, send me a new phone, YouTube. The fun does not stop there. This has rear vents, rear vents, and they're pretty big too. These are actually fairly large rear vents. Love the rear vintage going on here. Fun fact, because the rear vents are like this, if you, <laughs> I don't know if this was intentional or if this was accidental, that little cubby hole underneath the armrest gets really cool if you have the air conditioning on. 
but rear vents. It does have an armrest with two cup holders, standard cup holders. In the middle seat is a little bit more tight. Let me put it to you this way. The middle seat in this is more comfortable than any seating position in the back of the Chevy Volt. I hate to sound like I'm bashing the Volt, but I will have to see if I can get the old footage. That's from my other YouTube channel, which is no longer up. But uh, I tried to get into the back of a Chevy Volt. It was like a 2019 or 2018 Chevy Volt. Maybe it was a 2017. 2017. But I tried to get into the back seat of a 2017 Chevy Volt with the front seat, the driver's seat in my driving position and the passenger seat with a little bit further up. I could not fit. The middle seat is there in the Volt, but there is no foot room for it at all. The center console literally has a hump that comes up all the way back. So, long story short, never is. The back seat is literally unusable if you have a taller driver and a taller front passenger. The back of the seat literally touches the seat cushion. So, yeah, these seats do fold down. But Honda has a clever way of making it so that you can't just get into the car and and fold the seats down. I'm going to take an educated guess and say that's for security. So for example, you can open it from inside the car, but it requires your key. So what you're hearing, so what you're hearing is the fact that the key is in my pocket and I'm in the trunk. It won't actually let the trunk close on me. Check that out. That's so cool. But you can fit in here. This is actually a very large trunk. Even with stuff in here, I'm pretty comfy. And there is a latch back here in case you do get kidnapped and you get put in the back of a Clarity. It still does have a manual latch so you can pop it open and escape. Here are the two latches to release the seats. So you pull them, you either crawl back in here and push them. Whew. Or you can just open up the rear doors and drop them down yourself. So it does have a pretty decent pass-through. This has a lot bigger pass-through than what other auto manufacturers offer with their sedans, like for example the Ford Fusion Hybrid. Uh, the battery in the back of that thing literally takes up so much space in the trunk it's practically unusable. So that was kind of weird. That's what happens when an auto manufacturer takes a car platform that they already build something else for, the gasoline version of the Ford Fusion, and then they add it to make it a plug-in hybrid. So with this, the Honda Clarity was built and designed to be a battery electric vehicle, plug-in hybrid, and even a hydrogen fuel cell version. With that in mind, it just means that this car literally was built from the ground up to be what it is. Thus, you have this relatively massive pass-through. So what that basically means is that this has a bigger pass-through than you can find in any other plug-in hybrid sedan in the same class. This is relatively massive. There's another shot of the key to release the trunk in case the battery power ever goes out because the trunk has no other except for inside the trunk which won't do you any good if you're on the outside of the trunk. There are no other mechanical mechanisms to open the trunk except for this keyhole in case the power goes out. I want to bring attention to this right here. This is actually a little plastic plexiglass little window so that you can see through this because when the trunk is closed there is another window that is glass on the back of the trunk so you've got like this split design you've got the rear window that that's pretty standard and then you've got this little window to peek out the back as well here's what the inside of the trunk of that window looks like and here's what the back looks like you can barely tell it's there Hello, there's me, filming. 
on the driver's side, this is where you will find the standard J1772 plug-in. It's pretty much trying to be standard all across the board in the U.S. This is where you can plug in and get your either 120 volts or 240 volts. At 120, you're looking at about 10 to 12 hours for a full charge if your battery is completely zeroed out. As you see here, I'm at a level two charger and that will bump things up into about two and a half hours. Also on the driver's side, but on the rear of the vehicle, this is where you will find the inevitable fuel door for just standard good old fashioned gas. If you play this right, if your daily commute, day in and day out, is less than about 50 miles and you drive all those 50 miles on EV, which you can, you will not be seeing this door open for a very long time. I think the styling of the Honda Clarity is spot on, especially right here. I just think that looks like some kind of transformer come to life. I absolutely love the way these things look. I know a lot of people give it flack for this area right here. But this was all in the name of aerodynamics. This is actually a functional vent right here in the rear wheel. Air comes through here and gets deflected out right here away from the tire the air that is otherwise captured into the top end of the rear wheel well is now swiftly evacuated right off the side if I'm not mistaken correct me if I'm wrong but the this Honda Clarity at least I believe that's across the board there are no incandescent lights anywhere on this vehicle all lighting done on this vehicle, headlights, high beam, low beam, turn signal, running lights, all of that jazz is all LED. And I gotta say, I am here for it. LED, reverse lights, LED. The only vents that are not functional on the entire car are these right here in the rear. You could drill them out and make them. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But I love, 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 love the styling of this car. I actually, every time I get out of the car, I look back at it like, like, whoa, what's up, girl? Take me out to dinner. Oh, you gotta take me home tonight. No, your eyes don't deceive you. A big shout out to this band, the Kings of Queen. It's a Queen tribute band. And the lead singer, who plays Freddie Mercury, he is the one that got me behind the wheel of the Honda Clarity. You know when I said who the owner was? He was famous. I wasn't joking. You cannot match this band's energy. You cannot exceed this band's energy. If you are a fan of Queen, you need to be a fan of the Kings of Queen. Check them out. There's a link in the description below. You definitely want to check them out. You'll be glad you did. Gas prices are absolutely insane right now. Depending on where you are, uh, it's hard to find gas prices less than $5 a gallon. If you were to have the Honda Clarity and your commute is less than 50 miles per charge, not even per day. I think I misspoke earlier when I said per day. It's per charge. So if you can charge at work or if you can charge at home, if you can charge at a public charger, some of them are free. You will not be spending gas money for a very, very long time. Can you imagine what it would be like to fill up seven gallons of gas once a year? If that. I'm just using that as the overall ballpark because after a year of driving this EV in EV mode, the gas engine will have to start up to keep things lubricated. So it's... It's not a full EV, but it is so darn close that you would be insane not to at least have this car in your arsenal. Especially if you're afraid to make that leap to full EVs. Personally, this is the perfect no compromise vehicle for the future. It has room for five adults. Five adults. Three across all the way. You can have two car seats in the back and then have an adult in the middle. You can have three car seats in the back. The trunk, although it is a trunk, that's my only complaint. 
is that this is not a hatchback. I wish it was a hatchback. But that's not to say that this trunk is no slouch. I was able to fit a dual, a tandem dual stroller in the back, folded up as you can see here. And yes, I was able to get the trunk lid closed. So the utility is there, the space is there, the, the, the fuel economy is there, the maturity level is there. Everything about this car is just so brilliantly laid out. It is hard to find things that I truly just do not like about it. And with that said, I'd give the Honda Clarity a 10 out of 10. I highly recommend the Honda Clarity, uh, the plug-in hybrid version of the Honda Clarity. You couldn't even buy the other versions of the Honda Clarity, so you're kind of stuck with this one anyway. But this is a fantastic used car. I know prices are just absolutely insane and not very lucrative for your wallet or purse or bank account at this moment, but do yourself a favor. Look into this car. Check it out. Take it for a drive. I think you will be pleasantly surprised. So remember the name, Honda Clarity Plug-In Hybrid. You will be surprised. It will shock you. <laughs> no pun intended. Well, folks, that is our show. I really hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you have to do to get this information out there. And one more thing before I go, and do yourself a favor with gas prices being ridiculously high right now. Go ahead and download the Gas Buddy app and the Upside app from whatever your, your store or your app store is for your phone. Using these two apps uh, will, will give you the ability to save a lot of money at the gas pump. They're free to use, so you can't lose. In the description below, I've got uh, some promo codes that you can use to help you save even more uh, in this together. So let's all take care of each other on this one. Well, that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye.